Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another edition of Adi Chopin Live, the official Afrobeats podcast. <clears throat> this is Afrobeats podcast introducing, where we introduce a brand new artist or an artist that we're feeling at the moment, and let you just get a little taster of what the future is about to look like. As always, if you haven't clicked the subscription button, click it now. Subscribe. Let's get our numbers up. The bigger our platform becomes, the better we are in position to promote our people without having to wait for anybody else to promote us. As always, this is brought to you by the Energy God Energy Drink. And this ed episode is also supported by Adult Nation Entertainment all the way from Ghana, Nigeria. Yes, sir. Representing in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my brother to Mommy the J. Yes, yes, What's yes. Good, What's brother? happening, my Let's, G's? First of all, to Mommy the J. That's a long name. I know, I know, I know. Why that? I know. Well, the mommy the jig is my government name. Mm. Yeah, and the jig, I don't know, it's short for jig, so, you know, there are many mm. pieces to the puzzle, you know. I like to think of myself as a creative, so, yeah, the jig. Creative, we're introducing you on Afrobeats Podcast, introducing today as uh, a, a, a musician, a body musician that people can check out. You, you do it all, first of all, Introduce yourself with regards to the type of music you make and what kind of creative sound that Dumomi the Jig puts out there. Yeah, so basically, I would, you know, like we all like to experiment, you know, with different sounds, Afro beats, Afro, you know, rap and mm. stuff like that, you know. But I just like to. I don't usually like to put myself in one box. I like to think of my what I'm doing, like Afro experiment or something mm. like. <laughs> yeah, man. And what does that mean to you? Uh, just pushing the boundaries, basically. Like just, you know, just, you know, being, being, you know, in tune with what's happening out there, but knowing what you're bringing that's actually different. Okay. To yeah, like you know, just that extra edge to it. Music. Um, cause when I spoke to you, when we met, you know, you told me originally you're an, is it an architect or a, what's the, what's the, yeah. what's the educational background? Yeah. I'm an, I, I practiced architecture for a couple of, I, I practiced as an architect for a couple of years, actually. So yeah. where did the music <laughs> come in? How did that start? Where did it come in? And why did you go professional with that? Uh, funny thing is. The real question is when did architecture come in? <laughs> yeah. okay. I swear, cause I've always been I've always been a musician at, at heart. Like right from right from a kid, you know, I was, you know, taking piano lessons and all that. Like it was even later in life that I was like, okay, well, what am I really going to do with myself? That I'm in school and stuff. Okay, let me be an architect that can draw as well, wow. like stuff like that. But music has always been has always been yeah has always been like at the forefront of whatever I've been doing like with myself but yeah like I went to school like down to my master's actually like I studied architecture in uni like down to my master's practice for a couple of years and yeah <laughs> you mentioned uni like uni like has an alumni of not only uh academic uh, you know academicians but also entertainers you have a list of people like one day call, you know, whole yeah, list of the band, you know, Odumodu. so many people. So whilst you were at university, where some of these people, like a bunch of inspiration, you know, people to look up to, like they're doing what I want to do, or did that never come into your world at uni? Yeah, actually, that a, a lot of people that mm -hmm. I used to draw inspiration from actually like. Fun fact, like, you know, LD was, that all, yeah, LD was also an architect in oh, uni, wow. like, yeah, went through the same, yeah, the same system in Unilag as well, and I met him, and we had this crazy conversation, man, it was, <laughs> as in, like, imagine, like, two guys, like, and he was, like, I was so in tune with him because he was almost, like, doing the same thing that I did, like, he had his, he had his setup in Unilag, you know, you go stu studio setup. Yeah, studio setup. Like so, you did you did that too? Yeah, I did that as well. You know, I, in my B I had a BQ. I wasn't staying in hostel. Like yeah, lo lucky to, me, yeah, lucky me. Flex, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flex, I had a BQ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, but I was opportuned to have a studio for myself as well. So yeah. And I what was that like? Uh, you know, staying in a 
big queue at school, having your studio set up, but still having to go into classes, take exams, come back home and try to record. It was, it was a lot, man. I can't lie, but I think it's at the end of the day, nothing that time management with a little bit of luck could not solve <laughs> and prayer because man, like it, it wasn't easy, man. Cause ah, uh, architecture on its own is is yeah is a very very consuming you know aspect of one's life like mm. yeah and music as well so having free time was almost you know almost impossible. a non-existent thing because ah there's there's a saying that goes like you know unilag students will know like your classmates will know you more than your roommates like you spend so much time in class like you know overnight overnight mm. overnight then you come back to the room you know Record, 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 go back, you know, like it was just like, but it was fun, mm. you know, that's, that's the thing that kept me going at the end of the day, like architecture is actually a really interesting thing. You know? Now, to the music, yeah. um, you've got layers, yeah. Afro beats, you also rap, um, yeah. you already have collaborations with incredible folks like Nini Ola, you know, you're signed to adult entertainment, uh, yes, talk sir. to me about even that partnership. Where, how did you get into a relationship with adult entertainment? Where did you even find them? How does a young artist recording in the studio in his own BQ trying to become a professional musician link up with a platform that believes in the in your art and ready to put you out there? Mm. Well, I'd say the, the first thing, the first step is to actually like believe in what you're doing, like believe in yourself, like you push yourself like you don't that if nothing was available to you you'd still be doing it anyway mm. like i had to be my own engineer i had to be my own songwriter i had to be my own promoter i had to be my own graphics guy i had to be my own wow. video editor That's my own what director Trey songs. songs actually shout out Trey songs yeah. he did an interview and he said that that he also had to be his own collaborating artist. Yeah. Where he would sign, he would mimic <laughs> other artists yeah. to complement a collaboration. I know, yeah. man. Like it's so like I mean, like, it's it was kind of like a defense mechanism, mm. I can't lie. Because I don't know, like, when you're from a standpoint of lacking, like there's this kind of chip on your shoulder that you have that this beef with the world that what's wrong with everybody? That they that don't get why it. does this person want to collect 150k for graphics art for me? Why does this director want to collect 500k? Oh my god, I'm so angry. Like stuff like that. Like when you actually calm down and just learn the craft enough for you to get by, you won't be as upset. You mm. know, you just be like, I I can't afford you. That's but fine. I, I'll do but when I get there. We'll go jam for front, mm. you know. But till then, I'm going to do my thing with my phone, you know, my laptop, you know, with whatever I have and stuff like that. And I kept going, going, going. And when you, you know, focus on what you have and just keep, you know, you keep getting better and better and better, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, as you're developing your craft, people will notice, you know, like at the end of the day. So, yeah, and so basically. So, adult entertainment? Yeah, I just... I kept putting stuff out. I kept putting stuff out. And the more you keep putting stuff out, like, the more you keep putting covers, songs out, you know, the more people reach out to you. And, yeah, my team, my current adult nation was, you know, one of the people that were like, you know, they invited me over. We discussed, uh, okay, wh wh what plan do you have for yourself and stuff? And, you know, our visions aligned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's working what so far. What is the vision? Uh, like pink, like the brain said in Pinky and the Brain, we're trying to take over the world. <laughs> 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 Same thing we do every night. <laughs> so, so, who is right now? Who would you say you're looking at and thinking? You know, that's where I want to go. This is what I want to do. You know, you've dropped. A variety of singles you've got butterfly you've got you know this that and the third different types of sounds you've dropped the afrobeat sounding you know you've had a little bit of rap sounding record you've got the kind of slow vibe streamers vibe type of record so you're experimenting with a variety of different sounds but when the moment the jig is chilling 
who you looking at and thinking that's the space I want to go into. Jay-Z. Mm? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's young girl. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. like Hove, Wayne, mm. like Cole, Childish Gambino, Donald Glover. So, so I'm going to stop you right there. Once again, if you just joined, this is Afrobeats Podcast introducing introducing an artist to you that we've just got a wind of, and you definitely can also di dive into their music, their artistry. I guarantee you're going to find that very interesting. You've mentioned three, four artists that inspire you right now, and I can say one thing that runs through all three, four of them. Ask me what. Four. They all rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They all rap. So, basically... You love rap more than anything else. Well, I see. Because if you're even going as far as Childish Gambino, like, that's a cult artist. That's yeah. a cult artist. That's not even a public opinion type of popular. Yes, he's got maybe one or two popular songs, but he's really got a cult follow. Yeah. So anybody that's comfortable enough to mention his name is like saying Scoop or Q. Yeah, right, right, Do right. Do you understand? Like you're you're a rap head. Yeah, I I mean, I I I love rap. Mm. Like whenever I whenever I like want to like like rap just takes me to like just so many places. Like one line will take you to Russia, the next line takes you to Burkina Faso, mm, like mm. stuff like that. Like I just I just love it, man. But that's the thing, like, love for rap now doesn't mean I don't you love do Afrobeat. It doesn't mean I don't love rock. It doesn't mean I don't love Fuji. And funny thing is, yeah, these people I'm calling, they are rappers. But then again, like, the things I pick from them, somebody like Hove now, like, what I, what I respect is how Hove moves. Business acumen. Like, how he... How he can flip, how he can flip, you know, 50 into 150. Wayne. Did you pick Wayne, Wayne, his work ethic. Wayne. When, Wayne, when, Wayne. Record, record, when record. Wayne was, with the year he dominated, he had over 100 collaborations what? out. Childish Gambino. Wayne said repetition is the father of learning. <laughs> Facts. Childish Gambino and J. Cole, yeah. versatility. Childish Gambino. He's a writer. Yep. He's a singer. He's a Director, songwriter. He's producer. a producer. He does stand up. Yeah. <sighs> J. Cole, like up until like he what was, his last album, he, he was, was producing, producing and mixing everything. everything. He was mixing like he was even sing like do you get like stuff like that. So people uh, that I take see. matters into their own hands. I see. I see. Yeah. So I always idolized like people like Ross as well. Like like R U S S. Ross, the one from Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy that just yeah, yeah ha dropped like nine mixtapes. I first. always talk when I, whenever I advise indep independent artists, I think I mentioned him to you as yeah, well. Yeah. That's the one person I always advise everybody just to go and study. Number one, he's inspired. He is, you know, extremely talented. Word. He's believable. You know, so he's he's just so unique and all of those elements you usually don't find in an independent artist. Yeah. You, they, you people people have those elements being supported by different types of people, but you have it all yeah. in one person. So it's almost like a walking, talking, book, study, kind of case study on Word. how to do it by yourself. I respect people like that, man. People like that are unstoppable because yeah. I love putting myself in a situation that there is no one on earth that can stop me from recording the songs. Like, there's nothing that can happen like you steal my laptop, you take my phones. Every producer is not picking my call. No sound engine. It's that does not mean a record do not come out. All I need is maybe a flash drive, and maybe somebody that just has access to a USB microphone. Okay, I have the software on my flash drive. I have my microphone. Oh my G, what's happening? Can I borrow your laptop for two and a half hours? You know, plug it up, install it really quickly, plug the plug and play mic, record what I got to do, and that's it. And that's it. 
and that's it and yeah i i mean a plug and play might might be about like 30 pounds mm. but yeah i, I mean just still make it happen yeah you can make 30 pounds happen now like but i i mean like nothing 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 that's the thing that's what i love about like the whole thing but that now doesn't mean i intend to be an island you know that's why you know it's it's a very dangerous thing. That's not the moral of the story, being an island. But it's just yeah. to be able, if but you find yourself in that position, yes. still make it work. Exactly. Have just have it behind your mind that or more, if it hits the fan, you can, you know. Do it, it by yourself. It's, yeah, the show keeps going. So you've graduated university. You're now a professional musician. You've put out singles already that describes the versatility of your sound. We're now fast forward into 2024, where I've got a bunch of records on my phone from you that I'm listening Could to. Um, fun fact as well is we're actually blood related too. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. fun fact. <laughs> that's why. Family. That's why it's so life is crazy. You, yes, sir. you never know how you're gonna run into somebody that's actually connected to you directly. So, what up? <laughs> yeah, crazy, so 2024 what's the plan i'm i'm speaking to your team i'm like is it with the amount of music and the versatility of the sounds are we talking about a project so people can dive into that because i feel personally i don't know about you you can share a little bit more light to that yeah that sometimes singles can throw people yeah. different ways whereas a, a body of work they can dive into that and and pick whatever they want to pick from it yeah well the thing is i'm just i just keep working mm. and songs will keep, something is going to always be out or always be coming out mm. you know but a body of work is coming okay but until then you know you can have this one you can have that one you mm. can have this one <laughs> stuff like that like we have a couple records going. that y you're messing with you know that's out right now there's butterflies out yeah. you've got la vida locas out yeah got, so it's yeah you're, you're pretty much overloading your uh your streaming platforms to make sure the jig yeah. is very visible right now yeah letting you know it's a full clip yeah. What's the, it's a full clip. And, and finally, what's the what's the family saying? You know, um, with your choice of profession, and you know, how are they working with you know their son, brother, cousin, whatever doing? You know, being in the creative industry where usually it's uh, for low lives and yeah. may do well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels. It feels it feels good being the gray sheep of the family. <laughs> Finally, you know, I mean, after being the black sheep for so long, you know when you know when small something go don't wash you small, you know. At least you know you, you know you know too black like you're that again. You, know, you, you don't gray, you know. Because yeah. <laughs> fun fact as well, like I'm also like taking a course here as well, like mm. project management, you know, and I'm still somehow you know just it's almost like Unilag on steroid at this point, wow. like yeah. Like, you know, Unilag class, Unilag class. Now it's like, sorry, I was like Unilag class. Um, class. Class. Studio. Yeah, class studio, class studio, class studio. Now it's class studio, but the class is class and the studio is the studio. studio. Is like, <laughs> do, you get, do you get what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it's, it's no play yeah, thing. It's, it's not a game in any, in, in any you know, in any capacity. Like, so like, uh, this is like easily one of the... Scariest times of my life. I can't lie, man, because you know so much Expectation. responsibility expected. Like it's 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 crazy, man. Like you know, every day I wake up in the morning and pray for discipline, cause ugh, that's that's you know that's that's what I need, man. Like mm. that's yeah, cause and at the same time, you know, like it's there are so many distractions. And everything, you know, one can easily lose his way, like when you know you have these opportunities, like mm. in your front and stuff. So, like, I'm just every day, I just keep trying my best, you know, to work against human nature, if you will, you know, and just get complacent mm. and all that and stuff. What are some of the 
distractions for young body musicians like you're in this space now you're you know living in the UK you doing what are some of the distractions that you would not only advise yourself but another young musician to to watch out for mm. I say watch out for procrastination mm. that's a spirit in itself watch out for procrastination there is a post that i meant to post it right mm. now i was like okay i'll post it at 12 12 came post it at 2 like ah just do it just do it there was a day like i don't know like sometimes like i'd be picking things like from people and stuff like one thing about me is like i can't remember the last time in my life like i posted in real time mm. that's how much like i procrastinate you think. that's how much i think like I think, 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 like, I remember the day, like, we met at Smith's Lounge. Yeah. And we just, like, bring, bring your phone. And I give you my phone, and you just, wait, just took a video, and you just posted it. I was like, bah. Ah, that's it. And the video is already there. I was like, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that video yeah. made more impact for you at the time yeah. than any other thing that you had been thinking and planning yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, like. You know, and that's one of the things I tell every young musician, especially with social media, don't think of it too hard. The most organic things are actually the ones that fly the most. The prepared posts, like followers and fans can see through a prepared post, like a well-orchestrated picture or video. They can see that. But why is a video of Whiskey sitting just laughing and playing around the one that gets the millions of views. Because people want to see you in your natural element. Yeah. They went they want to see you when you're not rehearsed. That's where the power is. You know, that's so strange. The key. So if you see, you know, David O, you know, Whiskey and their most impactful social media content, even Burner Boy, that when I recorded the video, the video where Burner Boy says, don't explain, don't complain, just believe. That was the video I recorded. Oh, you recorded that? Just believe. Yes. <laughs> so I recorded that video. And ultimately, he took the sound and then he used it on a wider thing where he put it on the advert and, and stuff like that. But that video of him saying that yeah. went around the world. Yeah. Because I just... Capture, he, he had finished, and I was like, hey, yo, Burner, what's up? And he looked at me, and he said, don't complain. Don't explain. Just believe. History you know? right and there. those moments is what people want to see. That's really what carries the message. Nothing pre-planned and pre-cooked. And, uh, people can see through that. Yeah, it's just so, it's just, music, music is weird, you know. It's, you know, you. But how useful is it if at the end of the day, not only is it people that didn't, you know, go through the knowledge that are going to decide whether you are something. Facts. Like, do you get? Yeah, like, it's crazy. <laughs> not, not, only, not only that, but it's like, yeah. it's the stuff where you don't, apply most of the things and you were to taught all the songs that blew up when you ask the people that created it they'll tell you this was a song that uh, you know love one city was created in the living room you know uh kilo Feshe yeah was a, you know yeah yeah he, he, he was at a club like and he went to the back studio and he just yeah 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 yeah, yeah, swear, uh -huh, like, yeah, yeah. They, those are the things when you're not really putting that much thought into it. And I think that there's a big lesson there for us, you know, where we all need to apply that energy. But anyway, I wish you nothing but success and good luck. I'm, I'm going to be right there by you. I think you have Family. incredible talent. The music is fantastic. Thank I, you so I, much. You know, the aim is for people to go out there and listen to it. It's, it's got a completely different array of talent. If you like rap, it's got that. If you like Afrobeat, it's got that. A little bit of soul, a little bit of vibe, a little bit. Everything is there. 
it's about putting the music out yeah. and letting the fans take it. And we're in an, an era where creativity has become commerce. So don't hold on to your talent, put it out there and, and heal the world. Ladies and gentlemen, on the Afrobeats podcast, we're introducing Dumomi the G. Yes, sir. Peace. Whoa. <laughs> and we're out.